Paul extends this wonderful blessing to them from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a greeting from the eternal God, both the unseen Father and his Son who reveals the Father to us. Rather than being an argument against the divinity of Jesus Christ, it is an argument for it. He is tying the two in as one, Jesus being a member of the Godhead. He is not making some type of great division, but a harmonious blending of the two from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The two are one, just as Jesus said, I and my Father are one, and he went through all of the things that he said uh, concerning uh, his oneness with the Father. And if you go to, I'll just take you there because it came to mind, and it's just something that's worth repeating, is Matthew. I'm going too slow to, we'll be in Matthew in a month if I keep one page at a time, but Matthew 28, and he gives them the Great Commission, and what does he say? He says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name. And when he says it in the Greek, it's in the singular, not the names, the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. All the way through the Bible, there is the concept that Jesus is God. Old Testament, New Testament, Old Testament anticipating Christ. But how you can come to Isaiah chapter 9 and read that and say, that's not speaking of God. I don't know who could make that conclusion. Isaiah 9, he sh his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And yet he's speaking about the coming Messiah. How anybody can read that and say, oh, that doesn't mean what it means is literally crazy, okay? Old Testament and new. And then in the book of Zechariah, I mean, I won't go there now, but Zechariah, he has the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in one verse, one verse, okay? There's no doubt about it. Old Testament and new, the deity of Jesus Christ is a concept and it is a precept that is explicitly taught in the Bible, okay? So um, throughout Paul's, I, I see it right here, Throughout Paul's letters, as with, with the entire Bible, the deity of Jesus Christ is a concept and a precept which is on evident display. Now, that's something I did remember from all those years ago, okay? It is the very heart of what God has done for the reconciliation of the people of the world. To God be the glory, right? So God creates a being and he sends it to die for our sins. Where's the glory in that, right? God himself took the burden upon himself. That is where the glory is. Salvation is of the being that the Lord created. No, salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is of the Lord. If you just read the Bible from the way that the Bible presents these things, there's no doubt that Jesus Christ is God, that the Messiah to come is going to be the Lord God Almighty. No doubt about it, okay? As a side note, some translations, here it is, leave off, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Which is the true original is hard to say. Scholars argue over this, but either way, Christ Jesus is on prominent display throughout the book. When we get down to verse 15 through 20, you, it is all about Jesus and his deity. It's all about Christ, okay? So, his deity is so evident in the book of Colossians that only a person with a presupposition that he cannot be God could find any other interpretation of who he is. It's like